We started uh, engaging our family in philanthropy uh, when they were real young, uh, and it started, frankly, in some instances uh, out of a mandate. Um, so every, uh, every Sunday at church, they were required to give a dollar. Um, and what we, we didn't really care about the dollar amounts so much as we wanted to, to start forming that habit of reach into your pocket and pull out uh, money, put it in the collection plate, and let it pass on. And so that's probably the genesis of, uh, of our giving. Uh, and fortunately, uh, as time went on, uh, the mandate uh, uh, kind of uh, diminished and they started giving out of, uh, out of either habit or preference. When I was probably seven or eight years old, my dad first told us that we were supposed to give offering at church. And I remember the idea seemed pretty foreign to me at first because I had no idea why I had to give my money into this little bowl that they passed around the church. But then eventually it kind of got explained to me and I realized what the money was going for and it made a lot more sense then. There's so many different ways that you can give of your time and energy and um, you know we've, we've tried to demonstrate it all. One of the things I wanted to make sure that uh, I did with our, our family is to best we could uh, reproduce that environment where um, you know, we never lose sight of where we came from, who we are, uh, make sure that we stay very well grounded. I can remember from grade school, fifth, fourth grade, um, having them tell me about the things they're doing and the things that I should do, um, but my greatest memory was probably like sixth or seventh grade once I could actually start doing it and figure things out myself of who I would want to donate my checks to. So I think one of my earliest memories of giving back would probably be um, back when I was in elementary and junior high. Um, my family always had this you know, tradition of either doing Toys for Tots um, around Christmas time or um, participating uh, and volunteering with the Salvation Army um, where we would get to stand out front of um, places like Coburn's or various um, stores within the St. Cloud area and you know, shake the bell and encourage people to donate um, to the Little Red Jar. Uh, and I think that's kind of where it all started. There's a lot of different ways to measure success as a parent, as a professional, whatever it might be. And uh, maybe the best illustration of that, uh, uh, KS95 did these, uh, oh, they're kind of like radio commercials, uh, telethon kind of thing. And uh, in those commercials, they would talk about these kids that were going through this just terrible uh, uh, cancer, these health-related issues. And you know, the commercials had a way of transporting you into the lives of those families. And if you've had any kinds of issues with your own family, um, Sometimes you're able to relate to that, maybe more than you want to. Um, and so, uh, Corey, my middle son, uh, is just one of the most soft-hearted uh, kids you'd ever want to meet. Uh, he was saving up for this Nintendo, and you know, he's a little bit of a game, game guy, and so uh, um, when these commercials came on, um, we, I can remember sitting at a stoplight in the car. Uh, <laughs> we looked at each other, and both of us have tears in our eyes, and he said, Dad, I'm going to pass on the Nintendo and I'm going to send all my money to KS95 for that particular family. To give and expect nothing in return is just such a, a good feeling. It just, it, um, it, it's similar to when you um, are depressed or when you feel like, you know, you have the weight of the world on your shoulders and then you start thinking about others or praying for others. It, it's funny how that just lifts. It's like, you know, that, that's kind of with giving, you know. It's, you, you may feel like money's tight or that, you know, you have to watch things or whatever and then you give to somebody else who is in more need and it just makes you feel so much better. We chose the Community Foundation uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, one, you know, is the people. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Kathy touched on that earlier. Uh, there's a level of, of trust that kind of goes with that organization that uh, really supersedes any other of, of the Community Foundation's competitors. Um, there's also, uh, frankly, a little bit of a precedent. Uh, many of the people that were inspirational to me uh, used the Community Foundation as a vehicle, and so um, I kind of took note of that and uh, thought I'd use it uh, ourselves. I hope my legacy um, to our children will be that they think of others um, as much as they think of themselves, that they sometimes even you know, put others before themselves. I think one of the most rewarding parts about it is not expecting anything in return. You can give to someone and not expecting anything in return and that's something that my parents have taught me a lot is to give is to not expect anything in return and it's a hard concept to grasp at first but once you have it it's an awesome thing to do. Probably one of the biggest ways that giving back has shaped my life was when I was 16 years old and I went out to Washington DC 
uh, when I was uh, playing for the United States amputee hockey team. And we went to the Walter Reed Memorial uh, Hospital. And we went to the wing of that hospital where the soldiers who had just uh, been injured in Iraq were coming back from duty and they had all either lost uh, some, type, some form of limb. And I remember me and my hockey team walking in there with all of our uh, prosthetics basically. And just the way we could move and uh, live life really showed that these soldiers that they could also regain most of their normality in their life in the near future. And uh, just seeing how big of a change that had in their life made me realize the power that giving back had and uh, definitely changed my life and just made me realize how important it is and how I should always continue to do so. Uh, I established a very strong connection with my youth leader, um, Josh Johnson, probably my junior year in high school. Uh, and he had always encouraged me, you know, mission trip would be really fun. Uh, my parents had said the same thing, you know, this would be a really unique opportunity uh, to really get out of my comfort zone. You know, you hear about it in uh, classes and you maybe see it on movies and stuff like that. Um, you know, what poverty is and, you know, what a third world country uh, is really like. Um, you just don't appreciate it though until you uh, experience it firsthand and, you know, witness what these kids and what these families uh, live in. And then you drive in this village um, and you give these kids a soccer ball and uh, they are like just ecstatic. To these kids, it's like that ball is everything. Um, and it's, you know, three or four dollars, but it's, you know, an escape. Um, it's not that material good. It's, you know, something that brings the community together. It's something that they all, you know, live for and they connect with. Um, and so I think the biggest thing that I got uh, out of that trip is, you know, an appreciation for what I have um, and a realization that, you know, I am no more deserving of what I have uh, than any of these kids. Um, you know, the, the, what happened is I got born um, into a very fortunate family and a very blessed life. Uh, and that's just kind of the way it happened. Um, but that, you know, doesn't mean I should have a sense of entitlement for what I have. Uh, it just means that I have more to give back.